So uh, we're going to start with Amir Arkand, who is going to speak about generalized Renyi entropy accumulation and generalized quantum probability estimation. So Amir, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, this is a joint work with Thomas Henn from Wiseman Institute and uh, Ernest Hahn from the University of Waterloo, who's also here. Uh, okay, so... Oh, okay. Uh, all right, so let's start with the first part, which is the main results. Uh, I'm gonna start with introducing uh, a family of entropies that are generalization to von Neumann entropies. Uh, these family are called Rennie entropies and they can be characterized with a one real parameter alpha. In particular, for the purpose of this talk, I'm going to only focus on the conditional Rennie entropies that can be defined through their corresponding divergence as follows that you can see. The exact definition doesn't matter. Uh, you'll probably see them in the next presentation. Uh, okay, but uh, to get a sense of what these entropies are, uh, let's look at one particular uh, property of them, which is the monotonicity with respect to any parameter. They're essentially monotonically decreasing with respect to this parameter. For example, uh, if you look at the regime where alpha is bigger than one, uh, and we specifically looking at the extreme points of alpha one and alpha infinity, uh, we recover the usual von Neumann entropy and the min entropy. And you can see that these Rennie entropies are somewhat interpolating between these two extreme cases in this particular region. But why do we care about them? Well, it turns out that they're quite useful in a lot of information theoretic tasks, for example, in the, the task of quantum decoupling theorem and specialization of it, the privacy amplification, which characterizes the secret key length from a QKD protocol, also data compression and lots of others. Okay, now moving forward. So if we look at the von Neumann entropies, there is a particular chain rule that uh, is of interest for our purpose. And that is that if we have a n partite state, and we are interested in calculating its conditional entropy such that we have like an n different registers in the left-hand side of the conditioning. We can use this particular chain rule to decompose it into a bunch of other uh, von Neumann entropies where this time uh, the, on the left-hand side of the conditioning register, only one register appears as you can see up here. here. But a uh, natural question here would be, well, can we uh, generalize this to the Rennie entropies? And the answer to that is, uh, it would be really good, but unfortunately, no, uh, we cannot do this. However, uh, one can ask, can we uh, sort of get something almost close to inequality, some form of uh, inequality? And the answer to which is, well, under some, uh, some if, if you satisfy some assumptions, then yes, and uh, you need to use the generalized entropy accumulation framework. But what are those assumptions? So essentially, uh, what you need to have is that your final state that, the final state that you're going to calculate this conditional entropy needs to be generated by applying these sequence of channels. And also the registers that are going to appear on the left-hand side has to be generated sequentially by these channels uh, where you present them by these A. And uh, these channels could be uh, quite arbitrary as long as they satisfy a particular non-signaling condition such that they cannot signal from the R register to the E register there. So as long as you have these uh, set of assumptions, you can use the, uh, this, uh, the result of this framework, which essentially gives you something quite similar to what we were looking for. So uh, you can see that the both, both side of this inequality is almost similar to what we wanted, except that we have to take the worst case over the input to the, uh, each of these channels. Okay, now moving forward, uh, we can ask a more uh, important question again, and that would be, what if we condition on a particular event? And what do I mean by that? Let's say we still have this, again, this sequential uh, structure of the channels, except this time each channel generate an extra output registers, which is a classical register. And we are defining an event based on, on, over these registers. And we're asking exactly the same question, except this time we're going to calculate this uh, conditional entropy over a state condition on this particular event. And well, the answer to that 
based on the current uh, existing method is, yes, there is a solution to that, and that is just applying generalized entropy accumulation with testing. So it's an extension to what I showed you previously. OK, but uh, I kept talking about these sequence of channels, but I didn't give you any intuition. So let's, uh, let's see how we can think of it to get some intuition on this. So imagine we are dealing with a uh, N round protocol, uh, in which case each of these channels can be corresponded to a, whatever happens at each single round of that particular protocol. For example, we can see it as a, uh, we can see this as Alice and Bob receiving a qubit and measuring it. So this could be the action of a single round protocol. And then uh, the C register here are somewhat accumulating the test data and then the sense in which they accumulate this uh, can be seen in, for example, in a BB84 protocol, uh, these C registers record whether a round is a test round or not. And if it's a test round, whether the measurement results for Alice and Bob matches. Another example is the CHSH game where again, these registers record whether we have a test round or not, and if, if so, whether the game is won or lost. Okay, now going back to the uh, generalized entropy accumulation, let's look a little bit more detail of what it has to offer for the case where we have uh, conditioning on, this, on some event. Let me introduce some notation. So here we have omega, which is an acceptance set on the uh, classical registers. And then we have Sigma, which is the set of all possible states that can be generated at each round of the protocol. And then we also define S of omega, the set of all frequency uh, distributions within the acceptance that can be accepted in the protocol. And using the generalized entropy accumulation, we can get the following result for the case where we condition on some particular event. So I, I want you to uh, point out on a single I want to point out a single important property here, and that is the uh, for the uh, first round, first term correction. You can see that we have this f of q function. This we refer to this as a min trade off function, which is essentially an affine function that lower bounds uh, on the uh, worst case von Neumann entropy, conditional entropy. Now, if you look closely, you see that the, the bound is kind of independent of the choice of the like we have an extra degree of freedom on the choice of this min trade off function. So that means if we want to get the best results, we have to optimize over this min trade off function, which is quite a difficult task to do so. And also, uh, well, the entire bound may not, uh, in fact, be optimal in general. So to resolve these issues, uh, we introduced this new uh, generalized Rennie entropy accumulation framework which I'm going to explain to you a simplified version of it. So again, we still have the same structure of the channels and same notations and all, except that this time under this framework, what we get is a little bit different for the uh, first, first term correction. And the first order term here is a double optimization quantity where the uh, objective function is a KL divergence and is some linear combination of the Rennie conditional entropy. Now, despite the horrible looking of this thing, it can be reformulated into an equivalent convex optimization, which is quite nice. And also, you can even further simplify this to get a bound, uh, to uh, write it down in terms of von Neumann entropy, and yet you get better results compared to the previous generalized entropy accumulation. Okay, now let's move to the proof techniques. So I'm gonna introduce something called quantum estimation score system entropy. It's quite long uh, name for it. Uh, this is defined for a classical quantum states where the classical registers in general could be appear at both sides of the conditioning system, you can see here. And then, uh, so I will explain to you in a bit what this exactly has to offer. But uh, as ju just for a hint, this sub superscript of F here, the role that it's going to play is it's going to be some form of estimator on this divergence term that appears in the oh, that appears in the exponent. 
So this is going to be some form of estimator. Okay, this is almost the same as the quantum estimation factors that was introduced by Zhang et al. a while back. And also this formulation of looking at it as an entropy-like quantity is based on a recent result of the F-weighted Renyi entropies that is introduced by Van Himbeck et al. very quite recently. Okay, this is horrible. Let's try to understand what this thing is. So uh, let's specialize this. Special case, let's say we have only one classical register and that's only appearing on the conditioning system, in which case we have this real, uh, really nice, simple formula for these QES entropies. And let us ask ourselves this very important question. Can we develop some form, some nice framework that allows us for each value of C, we uh, lower bounds these score function F, uh, we lower bound the conditional entropy with these score function F of C. In other words, can we have this particular inequality under some, for some framework? So the first attempt would be, well, can we always do this? Can we develop a framework that always satisfies this construction? And it turns out that it is quite difficult and well, we couldn't do it. For the, as for the se uh, second attempt is that, well, no, now that we cannot do it always, maybe we can just uh, argue it as, uh, on a uh, average sense. So what if these uh, functions on average are a lower bound on the entropy? And it turns out that this is also still hard, uh, quite hard to develop. Now, a little bit, wild uh, formula, let's see what if we can make it for some sort of average. And what do I mean by that? So if we look at the, uh, this, special, this uh, simplified case, and if we look at the, uh, the term within the log, this looks like some form of an average because we have like a sum over probabilities, except that uh, we have this extra exponentiation function here that appears. So you can see that the, if we uh, if we look hard enough into this, uh, up to taking a log and forgetting about the fact that we're taking the expo expo the expo exponentiation, we, we explain ah oh. <laughs> we're taking the two to the power of this thing. <laughs> uh, this uh, this is some form of a. Uh, average quantity. So the term that there, it, 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 it is being referred to is a log min exponential average. So essentially this means that uh, a non-negativity of these uh, FQES entropies are corresponding to having uh, these score functions lower bound to conditional entropy. Okay, but why did I, why did I went to all these hardship to introduce these things because it turns out that these QES entropies also satisfy some form of entropy accumulation. Again, same structure, sequential of the channels, except now you can see that I dropped the, uh, the second register that passed through uh, along these channels and that's only for the simplicity. Let us define the full estimator F of full such that it's just the sum over all these single round estimators. And in which case we showed that uh, these uh, QES entropies are satisfying a form of uh, entropy accumulation in the sense that you can accumulate uh, QES entropies of the single round to get a bound on the QES entropy uh, for the full round end round of the protocol. Another way to look at this, uh, to sort of interpret this result is that essentially we can, it tells us that we can accumulate single round estimators into the full estimator to estimate the final entropy, which was the whole goal in the first place. Okay. All right, so this is quite similar to the uh, Zhang et al work where they used almost the same technique except under the model of the original entropy accumulation to develop this QEF entropy accumulation as well. Whereas for our case, we proved it under the more general framework, which is generalized entropy accumulation. I should also point out that uh, there's another work by Van Hembeek et al. 
quite recently that uh, obtains analogous results and uh, except that it's under a little bit different model than what we have here. Okay, now let's look at some further simplification of this. Now, uh, the Zhang et al. showed that uh, after conditioning the state on some event, uh, the entropy is bounded by the worst case value of the full estimator condition on that particular event. But this is not uh, easy actually result because it still has some complication uh, in the sense that you still have the degree of freedom of choosing the best QES. And then this is the same hardness as to picking up the best uh, min trade-up function in the entropy accumulation. So what we did, we uh, showed that the maximization over the choice of these uh, estimators can be formulated as a dual, uh, dual to a convex optimization, which after you solving this, you get the results that I showed you a little bit earlier. Okay, and uh, here's a plot of the uh, power of our technique. Uh, the purple one is what you would get from ours, and the red one is what you can get from the best known technique. This is for the qubit BB84 without any loss. And there you can see it's quite a significant improvement. Okay, now the bound that we get on uh, fixed, on these uh, uh, Rennie conditional entropies are suitable for fixed length protocols. Those that uh, make an accept and abort decision and based on, based on a condition on accepting, getting an accept, uh, develop a generated fixed length key. And the bound that we get, I should also point out that are nearly tight up to typicality. And also uh, based on the, this recent result, the bound that we get on the QES entropies can also yield security proof uh, for the variable length protocols, which are the one that you can adjust the length of the key based on the, uh, uh, the statistics that you get throughout the uh, protocol. And then with this, uh, with this result, uh, our uh, finding allows a full adaptive version of these uh, protocols uh, inspired by the work of the quantum probability estimation. Okay, now to summarize, so we introduced full Rennie entropy accumulation and generalized uh, probability estimation. This yields fully Rennie security proofs. And uh, the, sim uh, the uh, power of what we got is that one of the power of the things that we got is a simple single round quantity to calculate. It is also gives us extremely tight finite bound results. And uh, well, I did not point this out, but uh, we also have a smooth max version of it or well, alpha less than one version. This is also useful for the case uh, for uh, one shot distillable entanglement, if you're interested. And for the future work, uh, we have a companion work with Thomas Henn using STP techniques to compute this single run quantity for device independent scenario. And then there's also another ongoing work, again, using STP techniques for uh, computing our single round uh, quantity for device dependent protocols. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'm happy to your first. Thanks for the nice talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Um, well, if not, then I can start. So what do you mean precisely when you say that they are tied up to typicality? Right, so, uh, oops. So that means uh, if you go through the arguments, all the inequalities can be saturated by an IID state, except one single term where we can show, you can see that if you, uh, if you pick your accept condition to be around the uh, IID behavior, uh, you'll get extremely tight results. So like, because it's around IID behavior, it's like up to typicality. Uh, Other questions? Yeah. Do you have any addition, uh, intuition why like rainy divergences are preferred compared to other ones? I mean, like you could base your, your conditional entropies on all kinds of crazy divergences. Uh, well, for our application, we use this to generate secret key length and that's for starting with privacy uh, amplification and uh, 
up to now, the Rennie version of the privacy amplification is the tightest that we can get. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Any more questions? Well, if not, then uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.